Hey everybody, and welcome to Authors and Dragons, where a group of comedic fantasy writers get together and try to make it through a whole game of Pathfinder without accidentally dying. Let's see if we pull it off this week. As always, the odds do not look great. I am Joseph Brassi. I uh, play the role of Bjorg Bjornsson, enthusiastic and psychotic barbarian who loves Ikebana. Um, I was one of the authors on the Mongoliad Project, and I'm currently shopping a novel called Glassblade and just finished a novel called Skyfarer. Hi, I'm Rick Walturi. I play Silas Kane, mighty pal paladin of Toreg, and in real life I write the Tome of Bill, and I have a story in the upcoming Indomitable Ten anthology coming in March. My name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, the rogue. Um, I write the comedy fantasy series of novels and short stories, uh, uh, Caverns and Creatures, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. My name is Rob Cruzy, and I play Kutharic the Lost, who is a rather surly and unpleasant uh, dwarven cleric who uh, heals uh, the other guys uh, despite himself um, when they get into trouble. Um, in real life, I'm the author of Mercury Falls and the uh, Disenchanted and the Dis series of books and a bunch of other humorous sci-fi and fantasy novels. My name is Stephen Weverell. Uh, I play Brandon Fymaster, monk and animal punching enthusiast. In real life, I write the comedy fantasy, fantasy series The Doomsayer Journeys, and I'm also an animal punching enthusiast. And I am Drew Hayes, the carriage driver on this buggy pulled by shit show horses. I am the writer of Superpowers, Corpies, NPCs, Fred the Vampire Accountant, and like Rick, I also have a short story coming up in the Indomitable Ten in March. And when last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had stumbled upon a bandit camp. Well, stumbled upon is really a strong word. They had hunted very hard for a bandit camp, almost gotten into a fight with a demon horse and supposedly super intelligent monkeys, before finally coming upon their much sought after bandit camp. And now they sit on the outskirts of the forest, wondering, deciding, planning. Let's see what they do. So you all are coming uh, up from the north. Or, yeah, you were going south from the north. You are just peeking in out of the forest. Before you sits a ramshackle area. It looks like a three-story hut clad in a lot of camouflage and shrubbery. Very much designed to blend in and not be easy to spot. But you all have managed to find it. The one thing that does stand out is the glint of a very sturdy door at the front. It looks like it's been wood and then fortified with metal, the types of which you can't tell from there. And uh, that's it. And there's just trees and grass and other stuff. We we should walk down this path. I'm sure that's safe. <laughs> uh, uh, Bjor Sorry, up to you. Uh, so Bjorg is gonna. Uh, I'm gonna roll a uh, yeah, roll a perception check. See what see if they spot anything. Certainly. He's gonna just take a gander about. How how flammable does it look on the whole? The building or the uh, or the the clearing? Because you're in a forest right now. Yeah. All right. The um, the building. Oh, the whole the... forest. <laughs> <laughs> roll me a roll me a perception, Klaus. Okay. Uh, Bjorg rolled a fifteen on his perception check. With a fifteen, you will notice that although a lot of the ground does look quite normal, there there are just a few things, a few extra mounds that don't seem quite natural, and extra thick parts of the trees. You can't really make out details, but there, there's a hunch in your gut that maybe this path ahead isn't quite as clear as it appears to be. Uh, I, I think that our uh, our sly friends have laid traps along this path, Bjorg says, stating probably what is blatantly obvious. Well, <clears throat> all right, for the fl uh, checking for the flammability of the building, Klaus rolled a 15 as well. For with, a 15, with a 15, Klaus can see that... Although it is covered in grass and roots and tree bark in order to blend in, there are bits of stone peeking out from amidst the amidst the camouflage. Meaning that although you could probably light the outside and the camo on fire really easily, it probably wouldn't burn that thoroughly. That would still be a lot of fun. <laughs> It'd be I'll pretty hard to see us coming if like you know the entire outside of the building was burning. <laughs> I think what's really I think what's really going on here is that uh, due to his phobia of water, Klaus is embracing its opposite element. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, I guess I'm the rogue here. Um. If you guys suspect traps, I'll search for traps. Is that a perception or is that a is that a specific thing? That is a perception. 
So as a second level rogue, you get a plus one to your perception checks for traps. Okay, so this is so I'm just gonna do a perception plus one. Correct. Yeah, your base perception with a plus one on top of it. Okay, I should put ranks in perception. All right. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> you get so many skill ranks. What did they, what did they uh, all go into? Class rolls and adjusted. Cheese. It's like knowledge <laughs> cheese. <laughs> all right, so uh, class rolls and adjusted ten. And adjusted 10. Okay, and I guess you're just searching the path immediately ahead of you. Yes. Okay. Then that is clear. Awesome. There are absolutely no traps here, guys, in the area that I searched. All right, I'm going to advance and then search up to where it turns. All right, so as you're walking forward, you reach a point that you were very sure was safe. You trip a small wire hidden in the brush. A log comes swinging out from within the... Within the underbrush. Ow. And it attacks you. So. <laughs> the log attacks me. The log, the log trap attacks you. Mm. Uh, it swings for, uh, it swings with a 23. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, does that beat your AC? Probably. Alright, um, that, that is 10 damage. Ow. Gosh. Alright. And roll me a reflex save. Oh, Klaus rolls a natural one. Well, luckily, this wasn't for more damage. It just knocks you back prone. So what you all see is a giant log come swinging from the tree, smash Klaus in the chest, sending him tumbling through the air where he lands on his back with a soft thud. Well, then, find that trap. <laughs> that natural one was a uh, an actual 10. That feels pretty good. All right. Is he still conscious? Well, we if he's not, we need to get him conscious. Someone needs to find these traps. Silas I'm down. nudges Bjorn. He obviously did not trust in Toreg. <laughs> Bjorn just kind of looks at Silas, blinks a few times, and then continues. Guys, I found a trap. I noticed. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> uh, I found it with my head. <laughs> can, uh, can, can, so, uh, I can still see the spots that, uh, that, um, I can still see the spots that I, like, originally spotted with my perception check. You didn't actually get anything specific. You just got, like, a general feeling that things were a little out of place, okay. and you didn't feel okay with it. With a 15 to sweep the whole field, you're not getting specific areas. Gotcha, okay. Okay, so you're... All right, so Bjorg, what would you yes. like? You know what, let's go ahead and have, it and have everybody roll into initiative. I think that's going to come in handy for tracking <laughs> movement on this. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead. Wherein a party that has systematically slaughtered all of its enemies, uh, gets killed by a bunch of traps. Alright, Silas rolls a 9 for initiative. Klaus rolls an 18. Bjorg rolls a 4 on initiative. Tharic rolls a 14 for initiative. Brandon Firemaster rolls a 21. Alright, so Klaus just wins. Which actually brings it up to Kuthric the Lost. Right. Klaus has 3 hit points. <laughs> Trying to figure so out. So you can where take I another. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess since I'm the uh, cleric, I'll go in and check on Klaus and see if he's conscious and needs help. Let me Klaus see. is conscious, although probably groaning and a little bit punch drunk at the moment. I'm gonna drag him out of the out of the way and let you guys deal with the situation because I'm not going in there. But I'm gonna <laughs> drag. I'm gonna drag him back. Okay, so Kuther just reaches down, like grabs Klaus by the scruff of the neck, and just drags him along the forest floor back to the tree line. Correct. Could you, could you heal me? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I'm just gonna Maybe just in a minute. Well, how, many, how, how far are you down at this point? I'm, I'm yeah. at 3 of 15. Uh, yeah, I'll heal you, but once, once I get you out of there. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Okay, Silas Kane, you are next up. Silas holds out, holds out his like you know, holds out an arrow, closes his eyes and and says, "I shall trust in Toreg." Oh God, <laughs> it's not really the best idea. <laughs> but it is a cheap way of discovering checks. So. <laughs> I am inclined to agree. Go, we believe in your faith. <laughs> there. Okay, you have moved 30 feet forward, and nothing happens. Or are you sure? Are you sure it's not like, okay, you can't walk on the grass as well? Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> Don't Get, get off my me. lawn! <laughs> An angry mage appears from the tree. You little bastard, I just cut that! 
Maybe but you still have an action left, Silas. What would you like to do with it? Oh, yeah. Double. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll double move then. Okay. All right. That's where I'll go. Okay. So, Silas, you step in and trigger a log trap. <sighs> and you uh, you weren't even making perception checks, so. <laughs> I, tr- I, tr- I, tr- I trust in my god. Which, of course, never out. never works out. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's see how the log trap does. Uh, it swings at an eight, which I don't think is going to hit you. Thank you, Torek. <laughs> okay, so uh, it swings down, and and Silas just like banks it aside with his armor. He's like, no, <laughs> no. no. He, he's he's walking around like with his eyes closed. Like, he just stumbles over a root, and it just goes over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Better lucky than good. <laughs> Fighting oh. Evil. <laughs> Okay, kids, but... they were smart ape men. They were smart bear men. <laughs> For reference, once these things are deployed, they're just swinging there uselessly. Y'all are plenty free to walk through those spaces. All right. So Silas, you've mo- used both your actions and miraculously made it through unscathed. Bjorg. Bjorg's gonna follow the path that Silas took. <gasps> okay. Uh, follow in the steps of Toreg. We're gonna end up more or less adjacent to him. I think that should work. That work? That works. Okay. So you have yeah. another move or standard. What would you like to do? Um, I'm actually going to take a perception check. I'll give you one of those free every round. Okay. So he's going to take his free perception check. Are you going to do a big scan, or are you going to do like just the area right in front of you? You know what? Big scan. Big, big scan. scan. All right. Yeah, he's just trying to kind of get the lay of the land. Because he's also kind of – he's also – just trying to make sure that, you know, there's no one sneaking up on them. Because there's not just traps to worry about. That's fair. And as we know, these people are really good at sneaking. So let's see how well that... Uh, Bjorg rolls another 15. Uh, with a 15, you uh, you still get the, the feeling of unsummit. You think you notice, actually, up on the tower, that there are several little, little stations, like little hidey holes, that have some wood sticking precariously out. And if you were to guess, you'd say these probably are meant to house archers. Okay, uh, so Bjorg is gonna turn and address the rest of the group. He's like, I see, uh, I see archery holes on top of the tower. Arch holes. <laughs> Arch holes. <laughs> oh, you gonna take any more movement? Uh, no, actually, I'm gonna sit there and uh, allow Bjorg. Bjorg is a savvy guy. He's gonna kind of allow, allow. Uh, he's, he's gonna see what the grace of Torag um, nets Silas in front of him. All right, Brandon Thymaster. I think we have our first convert. <laughs> no. <laughs> He'll convert yeah. your blood into knowledge. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's uh, it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a computer, except with death. Well, Brandon was impressed with Silas's trap finding skills, so he's going to follow <laughs> his footsteps. What about mine? <laughs> oh no, that was a great finding the trap. You just said. <laughs> It's so in a less attractive way. <laughs> uh, right, I'm trying this, to do this move thing. Sorry. This is reminding me of a scene in this uh, Quentin Tarantino spaghetti western he did that has a whole. There's a a guy with a mini gun and he has a whole bunch of his minions walking in front of him in a straight line conga line. So I am picturing a conga line situation right now. Now that I'm here with Bjorg and Silas, I think uh, Brandon's got a plan. <laughs> oh lord. <Yeah>. Oh dear. <laughs> Those might be my favorite words in this whole podcast. But normally, brothers, my preferred plan would be to backflip into the middle of the camp and let nature take its course. But uh, <laughs> we have a saying in the Temple of the Many Fists, sometimes you must perform backflips of the body, and sometimes you must perform backflips of the mind. <laughs> and in that spirit, I believe uh, a large honorable friend has the head of a bandit on his person. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Uh, Bjorg uh, lifts up, pulls the head out of his haversack. <laughs> and, uh, I have it here. Right here. I forgot are you, you had to take it ahead with you. His name is Bob. Are you going to wear his face? And, uh, <laughs> oh, God. I have our, our dishonorable, honorable friend Klaus, he's got the bandit armor, hasn't he? So I'm uh, thinking yes. we put You're two and two together. They will never know. <laughs> oh. I'm back. All right, all right. No, I like this idea. I like this idea. Let's, let's pull down some of these logs. <laughs> just, just to be sure I understand what you're doing. Is your goal to put someone else in the armor 
peel the face off of the head and use it as a mask to uh, try and gain can... entrance into this uh, tower? No, that would be ludicrous. So what okay. I'm saying is we can balance the head on top of the armor so it appears from a distance that he resembles their fallen brethren. Which is, I think you'll agree, is much more sensible. <laughs> Are we gonna? Jorg is gonna look at, a, at, at, at the head and just kind of say, "You shall serve a noble purpose, Bill." Uh, uh, okay. <sighs> I don't even know what to make you roll to uh try and Check. S- stick a stick a corpse head on armor and make it look believable. But somebody will be wearing the armor. Obviously. Oh. Wait, so one of us will be wearing the armor and it'll be stick and then sticking the head on top of our head? Yeah, when we approach the gates, they'll be convinced that we're their buddy, they'll open us up before we make a move. So you want to wear the head like a hat? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you say it like that, it sounds crazy. But... <laughs> 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 Ooh. We get the, the Haberdashery of death. Good God. Uh, while that. we're doing contemplating this insane plan, I'm gonna go ahead and heal Klaus. That's probably a good idea. Just uh, in general. I appreciate that. Cure light wounds. Ooh. I think that's a D8 plus one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. I think it's a three. Sweet. Well, no, no, it's D8 plus two. Your second level. Oh yeah. So you plus get four. Two. Okay, then it's four. So whoever wears the head on top of their head and the bandit armor is going to have a disguise check to uh <laughs> to pass themselves off as that guy. You and uh I will right. I will decide on any positives or negatives after I hear exactly how this is gonna be laid out. Oh god, please I- forget to take it off when we get the Caldern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um so Bjorg is going to hold up the head and he's going to look at it and then he's going to turn the head towards the group and just kind of mime its jaw going, Any volunteers? <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I am a dwarf, so conceivably, if I could fit into, <laughs> if Cathari could fit into his armor, he would have room for an entire. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. He would have room for a head on top of his head. We will make you look glorious, my <laughs> friends. So, is the team going to uh, cooperatively put the banded armor on Cuthric yes. and then and then stick it so the head is peeking out? Yes. I, I think that is a great idea. <laughs> okay, so here's a relevant question. Kutherick, how, once you get into that armor and you duck your head down into the breastplate, you will immediately realize that you can't see out of it. So how are you going to deal with that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> his excellent sense of direction, of course. <laughs> is there any way we could, like, what would we have to roll to put eye holes in the breastplate? <laughs> I mean, I guess technically if you attacked the breastplate with your weapons, <laughs> oh, you could try to stab through it. Um, oh. I don't know that Bjork should do that. Oh my god. I keep rolling periodically to see if the bandits hear any of this, and it's not a high <laughs> DC because you are all just... You're, you're literally like 20 feet away, like, or 60 I'm feet sure, away. I'm not sure that punching holes in plate armor won't... Make any yeah. noise, so. And yet, amazingly, they just rolled a four. I have not broken <laughs> ten yet. We we should all be dead. <laughs> you ridiculous! And I've I've done them in the chat. You can go look. Yep, I've been watching. Friggin' ugh. But perhaps if we put somebody full size in the armor and just kind of uh maybe squish the head down on top of them. <laughs> I mean, you well, could well, lead that's how, that's how, Kutherick, like you could have a hand guitar. on He's his shoulder. He's already below uh below normal height. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit too short. All right, here we go. I got it. We'll put we'll put the head on a stick. No, we we put the head on Kutharg, and Bjorn carries Kutharg and says, "I found one of your fallen brethren." (laughs) Not any crazier than any other part of the plan. (laughs) So Bjorg is okay with that plan. That is a deception that he can count. And we already know he can uh, use the head as a puppet. So we could convince him that that it's still alive. Oh, I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say that this plan is not going to work. Um, you know, natural this, 20s happen. Like, there are very that's, dumb people. That's, that's the only way this is going to work. Well, it's, it's, it's a, the, the dumbest bandits that have ever 
Or I roll a really good bluff check. Well, it better be yours and not mine, because Kutharik has a charisma of, like, eight. So. Oh, Kutharik, you will be rolling a disguise check. So what's, what is that dependent on? I think that's uh, based on charisma, too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hey, this well, plan cannot like, rely on Kutharik's charisma. <laughs> well, <laughs> because he doesn't have any. Uh, good news. Disguise is a charisma check. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think Kutharik is out. On, on don't this don't one. worry about um, charisma. The thief, might, this guy, this guy might have been an asshole. What if what if Bjorg uh, what if Bjorg puts on you know puts on a cloak and then puts like the bandit head in the hood in front of his face? So you're basically trying to Princess Bride this? Maybe. <laughs> well, it, it's Princess Bride been... plus a little plus a little bit of Hannibal Lecter. Uh, well, all right. I have no objection to that, but does anybody actually have a cloak in their inventory? Uh, this is a great plan for the significant floor. <laughs> I, I mean, look. How long ago did this guy die? How long has that been in the game? Uh, about not even a day. Uh, ah. You guys killed him last night, and you've spent a good chunk of the morning, it's probably in the afternoon now, wandering around trying to find this camp, but... but so the head is, is a little, probably a little pale from blood loss, but it's not, uh, yeah, it's not it's, like uh, it, He's definitely dead. <laughs> but, like, it's not like there's flies coming out of the mouth or anything. And we inhaled his body. Uh, another okay, option. I got, I got it. We just go knock on the door and put the put the head right next to the people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Okay, how sturdy does the door to this place look? Very. Very, okay. Very. You're pretty sure with enough time you could probably knock it down because you're very confident in your strength, but, you know, it's it's not a pushover. Like, this is a, this is a hideaway, and if the logs weren't a clue, they, they take some security very seriously. Perhaps, my friends, the, the goal here should be not to, to try and get them to let us in, but to get them to come out. Fire. Um, is that your solution to everything? Most things. Again. What about, could we use the, the log traps as a battering ram? You could try. But then we'd still have to dodge the arches. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a, a good time of dodging anything. How tall are these trees? Oh, we're going to go ahead and say they're pretty big and sprawling. Uh, are you going to climb a tree again? <laughs> average around they, 30 to 50 feet. Are they taller than the, than the tower? They are much taller than the tower. Because we could... Re retrap these logs and just have them swing into the structure. Are you talking about? <laughs> That's never going to work. <laughs> just for kicks. I mean, they, so one of the things we doing this stuff. One of the things we well they haven't heard us talking yet. Uh, probably yeah. well, we noticed yet. the log we traps. To, we haven't tried to hang any any logs. <laughs> yeah. So the one thing we very learn, limited supplies of the trap itself. So none of us should ever attempt to plan a land invasion. Oh, wait, no. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. We'll chop down one of these trees, and it'll fall in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bjorg, if we're gonna gonna do this, I think Bjorg should just go up there and try to ram them, just try to break the door. I still think this guy is the way forward. We dress someone up, we say, hey guys, I'm, I'm not dead, uh, why don't you come <laughs> around and give me a hand? <laughs> <laughs> Could, uh, perhaps we could um, put the head up on a stick and then poke it out from behind a tree <laughs> and ask them to come help. It might be useful to find out if there's, a, if there's a back way in. Whose movement turn is it? We'll go ahead and say you all sort of fell out of initiative. We'll start at the top. Brandon Thymaster, you have the action. Okay. Uh, I'm going to attempt a perception located specifically to my right in between these two trees. Okay. Roll me a perception. Skills, right? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Brandon Firemaster rolls a 25. Holy crap. With a 25, you can see that... Oh, holy shit. Yeah, there's another log trap just right there waiting to be sprung. Now that I've seen it, is is it uh, possible to move past it safely? Or to trigger yes. it and then dodge? You can move past it safely. I will move past it safely, and if I can do that in this turn. You may. Okay. Is it revealed to the rest of us? I'm assuming he's going to tell you about it. Hey, guys. 
there's a log trap there and I, I didn't need a god to see it because it's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ooh. <laughs> Finally. Oh boy. Oh dear. You guys got a lot more time out of that than you really should have. <laughs> okay. And we continue onward. So you're calling them over. You still have a movement left. Do you want to keep going or? Uh, I'm crouching behind this tree for the time being. Okay. Then that will bring up Klaus. Okay. Klaus would like to follow uh, Brandon's path. Okay. And safely skip the log trap. Let me move. Can I be in the same space as the log trap? Yeah, since it's identified. Like, I'm not holding you guys accountable once they're identified. Okay. And I'd also be like like to be crouching behind this tree, okay. and I would like to oh, wait. If I if I have a torch, I'm going to light it, but I'm going to check my inventory. Okay, we will. Uh, if you're crouching, we'll just say that's going to take the rest of your turn. And even if you don't have a torch, there's sticks everywhere. It's a fucking forest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but right, that'll well. take the rest of your turn to take out your flint and steel and start getting your stick slash torch lit. Oh, oh god, god damn it. <laughs> Only I had some kind of flammable piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> He's just looking around the forest. God, if I only had something that burned. You can't have my head. All right, Kuthrick the Lost. You hear the spark of flint and steel going against each <laughs> other, and you've been around long enough to know what that means. All right. Well, I'll 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 move up toward behind uh, Klaus there. Okay, that'll be one move. You then still have a standard, or you can. Move again. It's up to you. Um, I think I'll do another Cure Light Wounds on Klaus. Not the worst plan in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I figure I might as well, because I didn't get you very much last time. So, Okay, let's see. I'll find my keys. <laughs> Doing this in the dark, so it's a little hard. Ah. I thought it was like he had to, you know, stick the key in the ignition to engage the <laughs> No, <laughs> my, not that kind of keys. Motorcycle okay. healing. Yeah, Okay, Karik rolls uh, uh, a four. Yeah. Get your four points back. All right, thank you. You just don't like giving, do you, Kafari? <laughs> just not a giving person. He's the begrudging cleric. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have a little. He's just enough to keep you not dead. Yeah. He's got a bad attitude. All right, Silas, they are moving around, and Klaus has begun striking flint and steel to his torch, makeshift or legitimate. Sure. So, uh, you know, just... Be aware of that. Okay. Well, once again, Silas shall trust in Toreg. Oh, God, you're not going to follow Brandon? <laughs> yeah, I, there's something. Yeah. I think we'll, uh, we will. <laughs> uh, okay, so Silas trust follows Torek, Brandon. But let's not be stupid. <laughs> well, you still have another move, Silas, so if you want to trust in Toreg. And advance. That's uh, that's totally on the table. Follow me, friends. Oh god. <laughs> Step in the path of Toreg. We're all trusting in this tree at the moment. If that's any good to you. <sighs> Let's see where Silas goes. Oh, oh my, my god. god, that is perfect. Uh, that literally could not have been better. <laughs> As. Silas steps onto a soft patch of ground and plummets from view. Thank you, Tori! <laughs> As he has triggered a pit trap. Alright, the falling damage is automatic. Uh, you take five damage. And then... Uh, the spikes at the bottom have to make an attack on you. Does a 16 break your AC? Oh, you lucky bastard. So the spikes don't do anything. You are okay. So Silas having divin dove down a well, it is now time for someone else to take their turn. Someone like perhaps... Oh, I don't know. The archers who heard you all stumbling about and uh, poke their heads out from behind their little crevice, standing Silas. atop a thing on the second floor. Silas has cover. Yes, Silas does have <laughs> cover. <laughs> That was, bold, that was a bold move on your part. Yeah. Preemptively take cover like that. That was a uh, that was an interesting risk, but boy, if it didn't pay off. So, the first archer is going to launch a shot at Bjorg, who he can see through the tree line. I'm guessing a three doesn't hit. 
It does not. And then the other will launch a shot at Brandon. Oh, man. Guessing a five doesn't hit. No, it does not. Well then, I suppose Bjorn can take his turn. Okay, so uh, can I still see the path that Brandon Brandon took? Yes. Okay. Can I, I'm, I'm hoping that this will work. Um, he's going to uh, follow. He's going to follow that uh, that path, and he's, he's going to follow that path and get over here to next to Brandon. Okay. Um, and then uh, take another perception check because you know charging that wall ain't going to do much good right now. He's trying to. What I'm trying to see if I can spot is if there's any other possible points of entry on the tower. Okay. Um, get here. Roll that check. Spear rolls a 17. All right, well, there's the archer stations, which are uh, areas big enough for a human to fit through. They are about 15 feet in the air, would require you to scale the wall, and uh, obviously there are archers standing there that would be trying to impede your progress. Okay, so there's no, there's no, other, there's no other ground level points of entry. None that you can see. Okay. Uh, he's going to look at... Brandon and say so. Uh, I suppose the next question is: Do we try to get our paladin friend out of the we- out of the hole in the ground, or uh, do we try to climb up the wall and start killing things inside? Ah, that doesn't even sound like a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brandon Thymaster, it is your turn. So if you'd like to show rather than tell your response, by all means, feel free. Okay. Well, uh, last thing I want to do is is fall in another hole. Can I roll a perception? I want to check the area, sort of, by the tree on my 7 o'clock. Okay, you are going to check the tree to your left and see if there's any other holes. Give me a perception. None Brandon that you Fire can Master see. Oh, rolls sorry, an 11, sorry. Brandon Firemaster rolls an 11. There are no more pits or longs that you can see. <laughs> okay, I would like to uh, make a dash for the other tree on my 7, or as, as close as I can get to that, which is not that close, really. I'm going to stay out of range. I'm going to move uh, straight down okay. 30 feet. All right, that's one movement. You have another. Uh, well, I will use the other movement to get behind said tree. Okay. There are no traps that you hit. Excellent. See what a total lack of faith does, Silas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Poor Silas. <laughs> yeah, All right. I'll be, I'll be laughing when, like, you know, when those arrows are just, like, you know, sailing right over me. <laughs> uh, Klaus, it is your turn. Okay, I would like to do a scan, um, um, eastward, straight eastward to the other tree, the tree next to the tower. Yes. Okay, roll me a perception. Okay. Well, like one space above. Yes, yeah, I want to scan that whole path. Okay. Uh, perception, here I come. Alright, adjusted for trap finding, Klaus rolls a five. <laughs> totally clear, man. All right, perfect. <laughs> super confident. All right, I'm just going to use all my movement and go right here. Okay, you run in a straight across line, and you run smack into another log trap. Sweet. <laughs> to the surprise of probably no one. Where, where was that? Boop. <laughs> oh. Awesome. Oh, wow. Right in the terminal. So, you uh, ran straight to that log trap like you, you knew it was there. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. oh! Does a 20 hit you? Oh, maybe. Let me check. AC 18. Yeah, so 20 hits me. 10 damage and roll a reflex to see if you're knocked prone. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, reflex. <laughs> oh, I found another trap. <laughs> I don't think that's what trap finding is supposed to be for a rogue. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a good nose for trap finding, isn't he? Really finds them with his nose. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, one more rogue. All right, with a reflex. Twenty-five. Yeah. All right, reflex of twenty-five. Klaus is not knocked prone. He is still on his feet, although he is uh not not feeling too great after taking ten more damage. Yeah, I'm down to one. Oof. Okay. Well, Kutherick, it's your turn. <laughs> Silas is in a hole, and Klaus looks like he just took a log to the face, because he did. Um, do you know what the range of my Cure Light Wounds is? I think I've got one left. Touch. Oh, it's touch, but the, cha- the channel energy thing is like 30 feet or something. Yes, that is different. Okay. Kutherick will 
dispersing his luck being saddled with this group of adventurers trying to run over here. Okay, so that's uh, 55 feet. So that's pretty much your whole action. Yep. Yep. Well, you made it over. He cowers behind the tree. It's not the worst <laughs> plan. All right, Silas, you're in a hole. It's about 10 feet deep. <laughs> hmm. And you're a dwarf. I, I, I have a feeling if I try climbing this, I'm just going to wind up impaling myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and glorious pain that you will suffer from. Yeah. And, and it'd be really nice to, like, you know, to pull my my, uh, my grappling hook out of my pack, because my pack burned to, like, you know, the dust <laughs> back in that town. <laughs> oh. oh, man. If only... <laughs> If only you could buy a replacement somehow. <laughs> I think we Silas go... will, will spend this turn, <laughs> like you know, like, like re- reinvesting in his faith and uh, <laughs> pray- praying that his uh, that his comrades make it safely. All right, Silas is doing dick all. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for Klaus, the archer has a clean line of sight on him. Damn it. Uh, and archer number two, oh, he can see Bjorg. Okay. So, well, first one's going to Klaus. I'm guessing an 8 doesn't hit. It does not. And a 14 to Bjorg. Nope. All right. Then they are ineffectual as usual. And Bjorg, it is your turn. Bjorg is going to make a beeline following the same path that uh, Brandon took. Uh, okay. Uh, cuz he's going to he's going to kind of just get and uh perception so let me see here. Uh, perception check to see if there's any traps between the uh uh, see if you can spot anything between the walls and the space they're hanging out. Roll that perception. All right. Let's see if see how the uh, see how the spirits of my ancestors favor me. And uh, Bjorg rolls an eight. So Clear as can be. Lovely. <laughs> Running up and holding the ground. Uh, now I can't go. Uh, so where the, this tree that they're next to, um, can he go around? Like, does he have to go around on the side of the hole, or can he go around between it and the other tree? He can try and squeeze through the gap between the trees. That just seems like such a bad idea. <laughs> um, but fuck it, he's going to try it anyway. But uh, fuck it indeed. It's just, you know, I didn't, pl- I didn't play this character so that he could be smart. Um, <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to move there. Okay. And uh, Nothing happens. Squeeze. Nothing happens. Okay, so he successfully squeezes between the trees? Yes. Brandon Thymaster, it is your turn. Okay, uh... I want to move over to where Bjorg is and see if I can start climbing that wall. <laughs> Alright, you get over there no problem because the Bjorg has already shown that it is a trap free run and time to start climbing. Roll me a climb check. Random Firemaster rolls an 11. Uh, this is very sheer. Uh, it, it's stone and as you start trying to climb you find that it's kind of oily in the joints almost as if they specifically made it difficult to climb. So you uh you try and get up and you don't actually manage to get off the ground. Ah, fair enough. Oily, you say? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Oily. I would Oily. like to rub. Almost like they know about traps and uh, defenses. Should I would like to rub the man? oil from my hands into my chest. <laughs> <laughs> Just gleaming. Just gleaming. Okay, uh, Klaus, you are. Not looking great, but you're still alive. All right, Klaus would like to run up next to the wall and light it on fire. Okay. Uh, you run up to the side of the building and you jam your burning stick, and a few leaves sort of catch fire in the camouflage, but they just are kind of burning away and it's not really spreading. Shit. Then can I oh. move back? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's gonna take your your move to get there, and then you're just sort of like jamming it in. It's All not right. like a quick poke. You have to actually be lighting things on fire, taking your time. Okay. Well, I'm wasting my turn. Kuthra. Okay. Uh, we are one dumb bunch of fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I kind of like where I am right now. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna <laughs> Kutharik's just gonna hang out and uh, just let things play, play out for a little while. <laughs> Employing the Silas method, I see. <laughs> I might Speaking be of, swinging, sir. Silas, it's your turn. As a swift action, Silas will call upon Toreg and lay hands on himself, <laughs> too. <laughs> okay. And then he'll try to make a climb check. 
Roll that clown check. Is uh, I know this is gonna hurt. Whoa, Whoa! Silas rolls a natural twenty. Holy crap! Silas climbs out of the pit. I'm, I'm not even gonna make him mess around with speed or anything, man. That's a natural twenty. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, is that is that one move action or what? Uh, you know what? With a natural twenty, it is. It is one move action. You just like. Take a hop, grab two stones, and yank yourself up, and you are standing. It is smooth and beautiful. And unfortunately, no one's really looking, so they don't see. But, uh, you know, the archer who, who was taking aim, he's like, holy shit, that was kind of impressive. Fla- flash him a thumbs up and then move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Show me your move. All right. You get behind a tree. It is the archer's turn. Turn zzzzzzz. And seeing as you have provided them targets, uh, they are <laughs> all going to take the opportunity. They reach into their bags and they pull out small round uh, devices. Oh fuck! Uh, they <laughs> actually look like glass with like another liquid inside, and they are just going to drop them onto the ground uh, by you all. So everyone, give me reflex saves for half damage. Son of a bitch! Everyone. Oh, sorry. Uh, Klaus, Brandon, and Bjorg give me reflex saves. I think when we went up to head into this bandit camp, we were really expecting to find, like, just a bunch of tents somewhere we could loot. Uh, Bjorg rolls a 15. Okay. Klaus rolls a natural one. Oh, <laughs> oh son of a bitch. Oh, God. Oh, God. This could be the end of Klaus Richter. This very well could be the end of Klaus Richter. <laughs> Holy shit. And Klaus rolls a 22. Yeah, so... Uh, Brandon leaps effortlessly away gracefully, and Bjorg manages to jump, but he's not as graceful, and he still gets sprayed by some of the fire for... Oh, as they hit, the two liquids mix, and it combusts in a uh, in a small little blast of flame and heat that does moderate damage, but, you know, so it's going to do three normal, so uh, you are going to take one, Bjorg. Klaus, with a natural one... Uh, you, I, I, I gotta do it, man. You're just too perfectly positioned for it not to play out like this. Uh, <laughs> the, the liquid hits, and you do take the full damage, which will be five, uh, as it sprays on you, but you're still trying to jump back, and so you jump directly back, diagonally. It's a log trap. <laughs> no, not a log trap. You... My friend, jump into another pit trap. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're trying to jump away from the burning fire, you inadvertently jump into a pit. Uh, six. Oh, let's see. Oh, man, that would actually probably kill you, I think. What would that put <laughs> yeah. you at? Negative ten? Um, yeah, negative four plus six is negative ten. Add yep. the spikes <laughs> for four. Well, I don't know if a twelve will break your AC. No. Oh, tw- oh no, it won't. Yeah. So the spikes uh, attack you for 12, and they would hit for 4. All right, but I have a rule that you never die in one round directly. So we'll put you at negative 8 uh, and bleeding out, and Kuthrick has the chance to try and save you, or you have the chance to try and stabilize. Or we can just okay. leave him down there once it rains. It's just how Klaus wanted to go in a well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, oh, fireball <laughs> into a pit trap is kind of how Klaus wants to die. <laughs> yeah. So, so Kuthner, from your position, you just see them drop these bombs, and Klaus, like, leaps away through the flame, which, like, gets on his pants, and he's like, oh no, and as he's falling, he hits the ground, and instead of stopping, he just keeps going, and he falls all the way in, and you just hear the sad okay. thump. Um, so, but it is Bjorg's turn now. Okay, Bjorg, I'm assuming Bjorg cannot, has no idea what just happened all the way over there. Uh, no, no, that okay. is on the other side of the tower, and you guys had an exploding glass thing at your feet to deal with. Oh, you bastards! Uh, he's going to attempt to scale the wall. Roll me a climb. Alright, let's see here. Bjorg rolls a 15. A 15, okay. Uh, that will let you get a little bit up, but it's still very slick and slippery, and you're not able to make too much progress. So, you make it, let's say, about halfway up. Halfway up. Does the does the fire like you know ignite whatever grease they just put all over this wall? No, the greasy stuff is not lighting on fire. You guys basically decided to assault a a, a miniature criminal fortress with no preemptive work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we made TPK ourselves. <laughs> we, we hey, I had a plan. 
Mm. We, did some, did we did some preemptive work. We, we did it 20 feet away, and it was terrible, but, but we we did plan. We did plan. This is actually, like, I, I'm actually thinking that Brandon's plan was actually smarter than what we have done. <laughs> yeah. Boy, it's hard to do it worse at this point. Out. It really is. Oh. I still like the chopping down the tree plan. Brandon, it is your turn. Okay, I would like to um, uh, try and deduce whether this grease is actually flame retardant. Okay, uh, I guess roll an intelligence check. Okay. It should be fun. Fire master rolls an 18. Yes, he does. Wow. All right, Brandon's able to realize that as well put together as all these traps and defenses are, it's very unlikely that they would pair a, a liquid that was easily flammable with a, a defense that involved dropping um, alchemic bombs on people. So, no, the, the grease is not flammable. You don't know if it's actually flame retardant or not, but it's definitely not easily flammable. Brandon Firemaster would like to lever up and piece <laughs> himself down. <laughs> oh, okay. So Brandon Firemaster just takes his turn, running his hands and all the nooks and crannies of the tower, smearing his muscular body <laughs> with, uh, with just goops and goops and handfuls of the oil. Uh, I guess I don't. I, wonder, I guess I probably I wonder, don't need to make you roll save against boners, but man, it's tempting. <laughs> Brandon would like to drop a wink to one of the arches while he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you just, are you just staring him down while you're just slowly <laughs> lubing yourself? <laughs> intimidation <laughs> i was gonna say get a quest as an intimidation skill. you absolutely can and should as the, do that as intimidation cool i'm gonna roll oh uh, give yourself a plus three to that too <laughs> brandon fall fire master rolls a 10 plus three is 30 all right the archer uh the archer doesn't move but he definitely looks a little disturbed that's all i wanted <laughs> uh Klaus. Yes. Uh roll me a constitution save. Okay. Constitution, here we go. Klaus rolls a fifteen. Oh Klaus has stabilized. Yay. Woo <laughs> The fire somehow sensing that uh Klaus would spread more of it if it, if he lived somehow snuffs itself out. <laughs> and uh he he just lays on the spike pit ground, bleeding, <laughs> but not bleeding to death. I think he he yes. realizes his body realizes he's in a deep shaft and is comforted by that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Kuthrick, it's your turn. Okay, well, I guess I'll try to do a, a channel energy thing on uh, on on Klaus, uh, reach him in the well there, and, and, and help him out a little bit. Uh, all right, Klaus. We're gonna try to help you out here a little bit, keep you from dying at least, maybe. Go, go ahead. Rolls a six, six points. Six points. All right, Klaus, you uh, you you surge back to life. You're like, Ooh! that puts you at six. Wait, I thought I was at neg I thought I was at negative eight before. Yeah, but magical healing. The first, like, as soon as you get magical healing, you're considered back at zero and stabilized. Oh. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, that's handy. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, this back. yeah, you don't yeah. have to dig yourself out of the negative hole. Like it's um, it's just assumed that the first point like just booms you up. That's what makes lay on hands so powerful. Is you can, you know, um, stabilize people with one hit point at a time. Sweet. Too bad I you couldn't reach want... anybody else with that thing. Nope, that would have been yeah, cool. They're all too far away. You might want to stay in the hole. Uh, it might be the <laughs> safest place to be right. <laughs> Well, Silas, you climbed your way out of the hole, and you just watched a firebomb get dropped. Um, and there's an archer just sort of standing there, snickering at your friends, and, and also looking a little uncomfortable every time his eyes hit Brandon. Well, I guess i got to step out a little bit, right? Yes. All right, so I'll take a five foot, and then uh, while this guy is busy uh, running his, uh, you know, undressing Brandon with his eyes, I'll, uh, I'll let too, too loose at him. I feel like Brandon is undressing Brandon. <laughs> 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 Let her fly. If Yard wasn't halfway up the wall, he'd be doing the same thing. <laughs> first one, uh, first attack is 11. Probably doesn't hit shit. And the second attack is 17. Uh, the 11 misses, but the 17 hits. And that hits for max damage for 8. Oh, and uh, 
So as he is staring down Brandon, Silas nonchalantly walks out, fires an arrow directly into the side of the tower, and then fires a second one straight through this guy's throat. And he just tumbles back, and uh, you can hear him slamming into the ground on the other side, as he truly, is definitely dead. Truly was beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> You were just waiting all night to say that, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's bound to happen. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the archer on the other side doesn't. Oh, actually, he does know his buddy's dead. He can see both ways through. Uh. He sort of looks around and no one's coming, but he knocks an arrow and he's he's ready in case anyone steps out or appears. Bjorg. Uh, I don't suppose uh, Silas's arrow landed anywhere where it could be used as a handhold. No, it, it knocked near the guy, and you're still uh, uh, trying to work your way up into... He didn't miss that badly. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, can I throw another climb check to get myself in there? Another climb check. All right, let's do this, sucker. And Bjorg rolls a 19. All right, despite the slipperiness, Bjorg keeps pulling, and he manages to get his hand on the little uh, area that the archer was standing on, and he yanks himself up. And Bjorg, give me a perception check. All right, uh, 12. Bjorg rolls a 12. All right. You can see that there are four uh, bandits with rapiers on the inside, much like the liaison gentlemen you all dealt with. Uh, there are f- uh, four remaining archers. There were five at little areas that were just like the one you're currently standing on. And you can see that there's actually a door that shuts uh, right here. And if he had, if you'd gotten close enough, he probably would have shut it and slammed it and locked it to keep you out. But Silas uh, kind of caught him in the throat before he had a chance. Oh, hey, so, okay, so that's at, that's at, the, that's at the second level. Yes, so, like, okay, so, where, where um, you are, there's a door can, you could lock. From where he's at, can Bjorg see the, uh, well, I don't know if, I don't know if opening that front door would actually do any good right now, because Brandon's not in a position to see it. All right, uh, so let's see, I'm, I'm, okay, so now I can see the archers, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make sense of, yeah. and is this, is this all, like, uh, the, the level he's on, is it a, a continuous path? No, it's a ladder that goes, there's a ladder that goes down. These are little archer stations. Oh, okay, gotcha. That are equipped within the little uh, sections of the wall. Uh, have the others seen him yet? Uh, yes, you guys have made a huge noise and a body just dropped from there. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, but that pretty much burns uh, his turn to get in there. Okay. Gotcha. So, Brandon, you are thoroughly lubed. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I don't know, that's... Um... Where can you go from there? <laughs> I'm gonna uh uh I'm gonna move round to the door, hugging the wall. Okay. You arrive at the door. Okay. I would like to punch the door. <laughs> Fair enough, roll me an attack. <laughs> An armed strike. Brandon rolls an eighteen. Alright, you rear back and you cold clock the door and you do manage to hit the door and uh Little crack appears, but I mean it's a pretty sturdy door. You have not not put a hole in it or anything. Well, I'm hoping that might have distracted the guys inside. Fair knock, knock. Who's there? You're doomed. <laughs> uh, Klaus, you have awoken uh, after a surge of healing energy in the depths of a of a pit. Whoa! How did I get down here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do I have a line of sight at the archer? Uh, no. You have a line of sight straight up, and the archer is slightly at an angle out of your pit. All on the other right. side, he didn't have a line of sight on you either, so it's not all bad. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to climb out of that hole. Okay, roll me a climb check. Oh, wait. I'm going to use my grappling hook to help. Oh, okay. Uh, You throw the grappling hook up. Uh, I guess just give me a basic dex to make sure you're able to lock that into stone. All right, here's the dex. 14. Perfect. All right, roll me a climb. It's going to be a much easier DC. <laughs> I bet I could still fuck it up. <laughs> That's why I'm asking oh, you to no. roll. Natural 20. Holy shit! This party climbs out of pits like badasses. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Kutherick, from your vantage point, you see a grappling hook just sort of fly up and catch a root, <laughs> and then a moment later, Klaus comes <laughs> sailing out. <laughs> like the breath of Torag is blowing him up from the, from the fucking pit. Yes! <laughs> Uh, and he I feel le- like I've just been blown by Torag. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so he uh, <laughs> he, 
he tumbles and lands on his feet. It's just like, what, bitches? <laughs> oh, that, all right, that was awesome. But between throwing the grappling hook and making the climb, you pretty much burned all your movement. Okay. So we'll put you out of the pit. <laughs> all right, awesome. You can't be in the tree. No. <laughs> <laughs> you would like to become one with the tree. Yeah. Silas. All right. I, I, I assume I don't see any more archers from where I'm standing. Uh, no, no, you thoroughly do not. <laughs> you see Bjorg. <laughs> ah! Well, Silas will move up to like you know move up to the wall. Okay. I guess that'll be it. You're not gonna try and climb or anything. Ah, uh, you know I have a feeling I've I've used up like you know all of my God's favor with climbing <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> you know that that might not be the worst worst thought in the world. All right. Uh, well, it is the archer's turn. Uh, the first one, he had knocked an arrow, so he can't throw a vial. So he's going to shoot at Klaus. Uh, 17! Misses. All right. That does nothing. And uh, Bjorg, seeing as you just dropped a body and all of the archers are looking at you, except for when shooting at Klaus, you're taking three. Okay. All right. A 20, an okay. 11, and an 11. Uh, the 20 will hit. Three damage. All right. So one of them gets off a shot and sort of just nicks you in the shoulder. Um. His revenge for his friend. Ooh, I and didn't know. They don't super know that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is, uh, it is your turn, sir. All right. So from where I'm standing, uh, can I see how easy it would be to o- like get the door open? So there's a big bolt, and you are feeling pretty confident with your level of strength that you could, uh, in theory, yank it free even without any help. But you do understand that with the bandits right there they would probably try to stab you as you did it. So, uh, let's see here. So the other archers, so I've got three archers on me. I've got, I really have to get Brandon inside or I'm, or I'm, I'm in trouble. Um, so, uh, now, uh, let's see here. Bjorg is going, so, uh, Bjorg is going to go into a rage. Okay. Um, and then he's going to basically make, make a play for the bolt. So that would be a raw strength check. Yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. You're going to take some attacks of opportunity, uh, as you do it. But you're just so you're gonna jump down. Uh, there's gonna be some falling damage. I'm gonna let you know that up front. Okay. All right. So Jorg, uh, you are going to rage and jump down. Then you yes. will take uh, falling damage for that. Uh, two, and your damage reduction does apply. All right. And now the strength check. Uh, yes. Give me the strength check while they try to stab you. Ooh, a twelve and a five will not hit. Um, Bjorg rolls a seventeen. All right. With a seventeen. Bjorg reaches up, grabs the heavy board, and gives a mighty pull, cracking it aside, and we'll go ahead and say with that, he just yanks it open, pulling open the doors, and allowing the rest of the party to begin pouring in, if they should, show, if they should so choose. And it's that oil I... man! <laughs> it's oil man party time! <laughs> yeah, you reveal a glistening Brandon Thigh Master, just gleaming in the afternoon sun. And I think that is where we are going to pick up next week. So thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we will ta- see you next time. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to the original creators, which is us, the people who are playing it. The opening music, Take a Chance, and closing theme, Master of the Feast, are both credited to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and also used under a Creative Commons license.